Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Randy Bird, and we're here with Like a Boss Podcast. And I'm super excited as we relaunch the show. You can hear the cool music we have. You see the beautiful girl in the background. And uh, Like a Boss Pod, we're taking this to a new level for 2022. And first of all, let me welcome Andrea Beam to the team. Andrea, how are you? And welcome. What's up, Randy? <laughs> I am doing awesome. This is exciting stuff here today. <laughs> this is, this is. And, you know, what we want to do is bring a podcast and, uh, you know, we're going to see a podcast out there, but bring a podcast that's really focused on the a boss, somebody going for it, lady boss, boy boss, man boss, girl boss, whatever it is, like a boss, somebody that's going for it in the entrepreneur space, you know, real estate brokers, team leaders, um, visionaries, small business owners. I don't, it doesn't matter if you're a plumber, a contractor, or you have a hot dog stand. If you're looking to take it to another, another level, yeah. we want to bring excitement and opportunity to this show. That's going to give you, you know, real world things that are going to help you. We're going to have some amazing guests to the show that are crushing it in their respective uh, fields. We've had some great guests on the show in the past, but I'm really excited about this partnership partnership here with Andrea Beam and the Beam team here in uh, Oregon and uh, what this looks like for the podcast going forward. So with that, welcome Andrea Beam. Let's, let's rock and roll like a boss. <laughs> let's do this. Let's so do this. so give, a, give everybody a little background on yourself. They've been hearing me babble forever. So <laughs> Give, give us a little background, you know, what's your, what's your yeah. upcoming through the entrepreneur space? Well, I got into real estate in 2008. I mean, you guys, that was when it was crashing, right? My husband was like, what are you doing? And my, my response was, I got this, <laughs> <laughs> I got this. And, um, you know, obviously through ups and downs and sideways, everything in between, um, still here today, still kicking. So, um, you, you have know, a big day team here in the Willamette Valley. Yes. Yeah, we do. We're, we're uh, approaching what we've got about 10, 11, we're, we're up to about 11 right now. Wow. Um, we're going to double in size this year and have some, you know, big, like a boss goals and we're going to hit every single one of them. I love that. I, I have no doubt since the day I've met you, and uh, until now, you've shown me that you're really a planner. We're going to laugh about that and talk about that a little bit because I'm not a planner. I'm a wing it. I'm a, I, I got this right. Turn on the lights. I'm on stage and I'm ready to roll. Uh, I remember John Maxwell. I'm a big fan. And he said, you have to practice for one hour for every one minute on your, on, you're on stage. And I was like, holy crap. That's like 30 oh. hours for 30 minutes. I pra I, I'm like three or four minutes of practice for that 30 yeah. minute piece on stage. But, Sometimes you know, not not practicing and not I shouldn't say not practicing not not having it be scripted right like not having that is actually better because you're more authentic and real and engaging and yeah, it's not it's just not the same it's um it's different in a good way yeah and you were you were sharing a story right before we started and I said stop you have to share it live on the podcast so give it to me again yes. I love I love oh. what I was hearing. <laughs> So when I was a teenager, I competed in martial arts for many years yeah. and I was at a tournament and I got up there. There was, I don't even know, probably about 27 people in our group and I froze. I just legitimately froze on stage. Couldn't remember one move of the form or the kata that I was supposed to be doing. And um, I just, I probably stood there for about five seconds. It felt like an eternity to me and just made up the entire thing. I mean, Randy, I made up every move, every move, every every just... move. Uh, I just knew I had to make it extreme, you know, highs and lows and everything flamboyant. And it had to just be extreme. It had to get their attention. And I just somehow winged it and put it all together and took first place. First so... place. <laughs> that is yeah. So my hilarious. coach afterwards said, what the heck was that? <laughs> hey, first place, baby. Yeah. Like a boss. Like a boss. So um, how old were you? Oh, my gosh. At that time, I think it was about 16. Oh, that's so awesome. I um, I did karate when I was in high school. I think I was probably around 16, uh, maybe 17. I think I graduated at 17. And I did karate for a couple of years. So maybe in that 15 range and went to be a red belt, which is like the instructor, you know, never made black belt. Uh, can't brag about any of that. Um, but it was really, really interesting how you start having reactions to things 
that were not, you know, not premeditated. It was really teaching me to have reactions to responses. And it was a self-defense uh, shit, shit shoe. It's just not shit shoe, but it's something <laughs> like that. Somebody's going to laugh about that, but it was like shit shoe, um, a kind of a soft Brazilian style that was a defensive, you know, it wasn't offensive. It was mostly yeah. defensive. But it was, it was, I remember those days very interesting and I uh, had my many a days I made up my own katas as I was going as well, but without a first place trophy. Well, you know, something you said there strikes a, a thought that I had that, you know, when we talk about practicing and in real estate, you know, a lot of times we're practicing uh, a script, right? Whether that's a consultation script for a listing or a consultation for a buyer or objection handlers, things like that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. practice them so much they're in our subconscious. And you were talking about, you know, there's just, there's something about, um, eventually it's embedded in you, right? So then all of a sudden, one day you give a response and you're like, oh, where'd that come from? Like, that, <laughs> you, know, you don't even totally don't realize true. it's there. That's actually a, an amazing transition because, you know, like a boss, for me, what it means is bringing value to people that they're going to go, aha. And it doesn't matter what, what industry you're in, really. I mean, obviously, we're both real estate brokers. I'm a general contractor for 28 years, so I've got a skill set in in those particular areas. And I've done a lot of flips. And so, you know, that piece is, is comfortable for me. Right. But if you take me out of that environment, it's not comfortable because I'm not used to it. And that script and that language and that response mechanism to it. And, and I've always told my team, Hey, I want you practicing on me, not my customers. Right. Yeah. I want you practicing on Randy, not yeah. my customers, because this is where the, the fun work is and the, and the growth is, and then you're going to go to the game on Sunday and perform, which is the listing appointment, the buyer appointment, yeah. anything like that. Right. Yeah. So talk to me about scripts. How do you, how do you guys practice scripts and, and how much weight do you give value to those scripts? Because that could be, especially for a new agent, that's the scariest part for a new agent that is entering this business, I think is what to say when certain pieces come up. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think there's a lot of hesitation, especially with new agents and even with, even with seasoned agents around scripts, the, the word itself has this like scary connotation to it of, I don't want to sound like a robot. And while I can appreciate not wanting to sound like a robot, let me, let me explain it this way. When you go to Starbucks, um, you know, you order a coffee in Portland and then you go to Starbucks and you order a coffee in Seattle, it's the same stinking coffee because there's a recipe for that, right? right? A script is the same way, right? Like you, you need to have certain standards and expectations for how you're going to handle a consultation. And, you know, so by practicing those, it doesn't mean you have to sound like a robot. It doesn't mean you have to um, say it verbatim and you know, my name is Andrea right. and I, but you don't do that. Right. Like, but when you practice it and you internalize it, it becomes your own and it becomes something that you're able to have a regular conversation with someone. And while to you, it might feel scripted because you've practiced it so many times to them, it feels a little more spontaneous, but as long as you internalize it and you're not umming and awing through the whole thing right it's it, there's a standard it's such a great point and you know we're both coaches in in different capacities and some some similar capacities and you know it's always something that comes up people go scripts don't sound like me though they're not supposed to in the beginning they're supposed to be a proven response yeah. to a you know um an objection or something that comes up over and over again that you can then internalize somebody else's script that works and then make it your own. Too many people try to make it their own in the beginning and they get back to the thing that doesn't work. Right. So, um, you know, I love that piece. And, you know, when I'm talking to agents, it's always a challenge for them to come from a place of like authenticity and, and it sounding like them without sounding scripted. Right. And, to this day, I still say a script when I pick up a phone and I'm like in a, in a frame of mind where I'm just moving fast, I go back to what I know, which I haven't been at Cobalt Banker in 17 and a half years, right? I've been in real estate 18 and a half years. Cobalt Banker was my first office I went to in Redding, California. And you know the first thing they did is I'm like brand new. I've been a con successful contractor, but I'm transitioning to real estate. And I said, tell me what to do, coach. Put me in, I'll do whatever. You know, I'm the worker, just tell me what to do. And he goes, okay, look, go upstairs and learn all these scripts and open the file cabinet, all of our trainings there. And, 
I'm not making fun, but this is a true story. I go upstairs to the training area and I open this metal cabinet. It's like, you know, like you're opening the Dead Sea Scrolls, dust is falling out. And I just picked the first thing that I that I looked at, which was Floyd Wickman's Sweat Hogs. Now this is old school, right? This is 18 years ago, but still this is probably old then. And it's Floyd Wickman talking about what to do and what to say. And I just literally went to page one. And if he said, do this, I did that. And so what I did is I developed a script that was, and, and here's the script. Hey, this is Randy Bird with Coldwell Banker CNC property. And here in beautiful Redding, California, I was just curious, are you thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in the next six months? Question mark, right? And then that was my script. And I called a hundred people a day. So now Fast forward, I, a year or two, I leave, I go to Remax. A year or two later, I get uh, um, asked to come to Keller Williams. I become a team leader. I start training and I'm doing live dials with my client, with my, uh, you know, with the agents in the office. And I get the, this up call and I'm like, hi, this is Randy Bird with Coldwell Banker CNC Properties. What can I do to help you buy, sell, or invest in real estate today? And everybody's looking at me and I'm like, I just had to keep going with it. And it's happened to me four or five times in the last, you know, five years when I get into my groove, I just go back to what I did a thousand of. Yeah. It really goes to show the power of habit, right? <laughs> Old habits it, die hard. <laughs> it, it really, it really does. So tell me about your team. How much do you guys practice scripts and role play to be a boss? I mean, to be a boss in your space, you've got to practice this stuff. Yeah, so um, it, it's different for different agents on the team. You know, when they're first starting out, they've got a 90 day boot camp they run through. And so it's really heavy during that amount of time um, where they're going to be practicing, you know, three, five times a week. We really recommend that it's every day, 30 minutes every single day for their first 90 days because they've got to get that sunk into their subconscious. So um, in the beginning, it's super heavy. Um, you know, agents that have, that are more seasoned have been with the team. They're still, they're still practicing those scripts or coming up with maybe some uh, different objections they haven't dealt with before or something like that. And so that's a little less, you know, maybe once or twice a week, uh, but just depends, it. just depends I, on. I where love it. Okay. So, so let's, I, I like jumping around a little bit and I'm going to yeah, yeah. throw you off guard with this, but I, I want to have fun with this show, right? I want this fun to this show to be fun. We talked about this. I have an, another uh, big Facebook group with a few thousand in it called uh, real estate happy hour. We're focusing on real estate, fun stuff, right? Things that we can make fun of uh, funny stories, that kind of stuff, but there's no shortage of that. <laughs> there's no shortage of that. Exactly. So anything come to mind in your real estate career that you did that was, um, you know, funny or otherwise that's in your memory. Ooh, well, you are putting me on the spot. Um, that's all right. I can let you, I can let you think about it. I can, um, I could write a book on things that have happened in our, in our relationship that it, are funny or otherwise, you know, there's a lot of stories about walking in the house with somebody in the shower naked and they didn't know you were going to be there. And um, I, I'm definitely not short on stories of um, accidental walk-ins on, on showing opportunities <laughs> and things throughout the years. But so yeah. let's, let's do this. Um, let's talk about what do you think would impact somebody listening to this show What's going to impact them the most in their entrepreneur uh, path? To me, it's going to be the disciplines of what needs to be done on a customer service level, right? What the five-star customer experience is going to be, because yeah. it crosses all boundaries. It crosses contractors to this, to that, and answering machines and, and answering machines that are full in business drive me absolutely bonkers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have something- oh, I I have something that I do with people all the time that is not fair, but it's funny to me. And if I call a real estate agent, especially if it's a friend of mine or any business owner and their voicemail's full, I send them a text from my work number they don't know. And I'm like, hey, this is, you know, so-and-so. Um, I'm sitting out in front of this house. Um, it's $4 million. I'd like to buy it. I'm all cash, um, but I need to close in seven days. No contingencies. Throw everything out the window. I just, I have to spend this money or I'm, I'm, I have a major, you know, penalty. So please call me back ASAP. If I don't hear from you, I'll reach out. I'm looking at this other name. I see Randy Bird. I'm going to call him if I don't hear from you in the next few minutes and I hang up. And without so exception, <laughs> it's, I'm Henri. With it, Without exception, I get calls back and they're almost always like, oh my God, you literally had my hair on my neck standing up. And I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. Clear out your mailbox. But 
Oh my geez, that is so ornery. I could totally see you doing oh, that. Oh, I'll do it to you too if I catch you. But um, it's it's one of my favorite things to do. It is so bad, but it is. Uh, I I could tell you there's many people that would tell that story. Um, well, but, so go back to your question because you were talking about. Um, yeah. So what's what's a nugget? What's a yeah. entrepreneur maybe crosses boundaries like a boss? What's a like a boss? We're gonna make that a mannerism, right? A lock up like a boss. But what's a like a boss nugget that you could leave people with today that crosses the boundaries in, in both, you know, real estate, lending, title. This is really going to encompass a large group of people, in my opinion, and entrepreneurs and small business owners. Um, what, do you, what do you think that one thing is or one of the things for you? I'm going to leave you with two. I'm a rule okay. breaker. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the first one I think is, has been heard of a lot, um, probably a super common answer, but it would be consistency. Anything that you do has to have consistency to it because consistency compounds, but so does inconsistency. Ooh. And obviously Ooh. we don't like those results. So consistency is huge. You've got to be able to do what you do well and do it again and again and again, even when it's boring or mundane those are the, those are the things that will drive the business, um, you know, behind the scenes is if you're consistent in doing those things at a high level, then second thing I would recommend, and this maybe isn't as commonly talked about, but I think it's a really key component to the recipe of being successful is really just the ability to take the hits and keep going. Um, I know having done this industry for a long time, I've seen a lot of agents come in and I've seen a lot of agents go out. And the one thing that I see as being really the key factor to whether they stay or they go is their ability to fall down, make a mistake, uh, deal with a really, you know, difficult client or agent or just anybody in the in the transaction, just any personality that might be difficult to be able to deal with those things and let it roll off your back, right? Like a duck and keep going, pick yourself up, keep moving on and not let it ruin the rest of your career over that day. I've had so many highs and lows. I can't even tell you. I can't even begin to count them all. This, um, this is a business and industry of highs and lows for sure. It is. And you Very have emotional. to be able to keep going. You've got to be able to keep picking yourself up. Sometimes so, it takes longer than others. How do you do that? What What's your skill yeah. set? What have you learned over the years to help you navigate that? Well, I think partnerships are a really big key to that. Um, having someone, whether it's a one person in your corner or it's a whole team in your corner. You know, I heard the other day, actually, this is a great question because I heard the other day somebody talking about having your own personal like board of directors where you meet with them once a month, people from all different areas of your life. They don't even have to all know each other. And you get together and the meeting is about the trajectory of your business, the trajectory of your life, you know, looking at the whole. Oh, circle. that gave me goosebumps. Right. Partnerships. But that's all. It's all partnerships. So I know like when you and I started partnering together on things, there is something to be said for having that partner that really believes in what you can do. Um, it makes you work 10 times harder. It, it really, really does. So it does. It, it's a level up. And um you know, it's, it's very true in our uh, economic model with this business, you know, the more I help other people, the more I win. And there's, that's a Zig Ziglar, you know, helping up people get what they want, you get what you want. And, and that's something that I live by. Um, and show me who your friends are. I'll show you who you are, right? That's the other yes. one that, that always sticks with me no matter what. And I'm always, um, I'm always doing an accounting of my, of my inner circle and my, and my friend circle and things with that. And so what you bring up about that, boy, that's a good one. Because when you can have the people that love you be able to have that board of directors leading you as the CEO of your life, right? Business, right. personal, faith, family, whatever it is, that's pretty powerful. Matter of yeah. fact, I'm going to give that a lot more thought and how I can institute that into my business. Because, you know, I'm, I'm always that, I, I like getting into the, the, the dirty stuff. I like getting into the stuff that's uh, growth. I'm, I'm just a personal growth junkie. And um, I know all the flaws I have, and it's because I've been able to explore those. And I love asking friends tough questions like, hey, I value you, you value me, but I want you to tell me one thing I could do better to enhance our relationship, enhance our friendship, enhance, our, enhance how I show up in the world in our circle, 
And it just blows people away when you ask them that. And then it's even more impactful when you get the answer sometimes. It's, we all have blind spots, right, Randy? Like you, even if you feel like you know what your weaknesses are, there's still areas, I guarantee it, that you don't even know or see. And if you've got people around you that are willing to talk tough with you and you're like, look, you're not going to hurt my feelings, but I can't improve if you don't tell me. Um, Totally. You, but you got to be willing to hear it too. And I think that's another key factor is you've got to be willing to hear the tough stuff and know what you need to work on. Um, Cause if you're not willing to hear it, then it's kind of a moot point, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. You know, and only through that growth, I couldn't hear things that I hear today, 10, even 10 years ago, much less yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, there's just yeah. no way I thought I was, uh, I thought it was a boss back then. And then now through growth and uh, getting up from those failures is really when you start to identify what it takes to be a boss what it takes to be a CEO and an entrepreneur. But wow, what a first great show with you. I'm super excited to continue this journey with you, Andrea. And um, so how people, how can people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, I mean, easiest way, honestly, is probably my email because it's just my name. So it's easy to remember. It's just Andrea at AndreaBeam.com. Awesome. And that's A-N-D-R-E-A-B-E-E-M. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Two E's. Unfortunately, it's not like Jim Beam or I'd oh. be a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> that, would, that would be cool, but, two e's. <laughs> but it's easy. It's easy. Well, listen, thank you for being here. I'm excited about the future. The day we met, I knew that this was going to happen. Uh, we just, we were too much energy not to ho- put that horsepower together and to oh, team up and what a perfect conduit for it is uh, like a boss podcast. We'll put this out to different places on the uh, podcast world, as well as the video will be available on our website that's coming and all these other things. So we appreciate you being here. Thanks for the support. And here's the, here's the price of the show. Nothing's free in this life. The price of the show is this, share it with a friend. If you found value, if you think that there's value in the show for you, share it with one friend. And if we continue to do that, the show will grow. It will add value. But honestly, the values right me getting to meet with uh andrea every week and listening to the horsepower of the show so thank you for being here see you next time for now it's uh like a boss pod saying have a great day see you later (laughs) bye for now bye everybody bye